The European Union is waging a new Cold War on Russia. We see that with the proxy war in Ukraine. We see that with the economic war. The European Union has imposed nine rounds of very harsh sanctions on Russia, trying to destroy the Russian economy. Everyone in the world knows that largely because this has caused a global economic crisis. It's caused energy prices to skyrocket, which has led to an energy crisis, ironically, in Europe itself. Well, what's less discussed is that Europe is also waging an economic war and a new Cold War on China. And recent statements by the European Union show how the EU leadership, which is unelected, by the way, considers China and Russia basically to be part of the same political power block. And in this new Cold War, it is the US and the European Union on one side versus China and Russia on the other. This is made very clear by an October 12th speech that was given by the president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, who once again is unelected, although in the speech she portrayed this new Cold War as a supposed conflict between authoritarianism and democracy. And of course, we know that Western regimes are not de democratic in any way. But this is really cover for the economic conflict that we're seeing and that is that the United States and its allies in the European Union are waging a new Cold War to try to maintain Western hegemony, Western economic and political domination over every corner of the planet, or as the European Commission President von der Leyen said, the entire world. The war in Ukraine is not only a European war. It is a war for the future of the entire world. So Europe's horizon can only be the entire world. And I truly count on you to keep up the excellent work you're doing and to bring our voice and our values to all corners of the world. I published an article about this, analyzing her speech over at multipolarista.com. I will link to that article in the description below. So what I'm going to do in this episode here is I'm going to include excerpts from the remarks that she made and analyze them. This was a very important speech that von der Leyen gave at the 2022 EU Ambassadors Conference in Brussels. She portrayed this conflict as one over the so-called rules-based order, of course, one in which the West makes the rules and orders everyone around. And she made it clear that the European Union's goal is to counter Chinese and Russian influence in the entire world, she said again, the entire world, and specifically she singled out Asia, Africa, and Latin America. She portrayed the global south as a battlefield for natural resources. Because we know we need the energy, we need renewable energy, we need the hydrogen, and those northern African countries have in abundance all the resources that are necessary. She pointed out that the uh, proxy war on Russia has led to an energy crisis in Europe. And that means that Europe is looking for new sources of energy. And of course, much of that energy is located in the global south. She did thank the United States for increasing its energy exports and also Norway. But she emphasized that Europe is looking for new so sources of energy and also raw materials in the global south in order to develop renewable energy. Now, of course, renewable energy is very important to fight climate change. Everyone around the world recognizes that, 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 that the world needs to move away from fossil fuels. Of course, that's not going to happen overnight. And what's often left out about that, an inconvenient fact, is that many of the natural resources needed to build renewable energy technology are located in the global south. And in her speech, von der Leyen acknowledged that. And she said that the demand for those raw materials is going to exponentially increase. And she said that the West has to prevent China from controlling those resources. But I just want to mention the third example that shows how important these moves are with our best friends. That is raw materials. Take lithium or take rare earth metals. They are vital for our green and digital transition. No wind turbine, no solar panel without these raw materials. The demand for them will exponentially increase, that's for sure. The not so good news is one country dominates the whole 
global market. And that's China. So she says it's about authoritarianism versus democracy, but then she later admits that actually it has nothing to do with so-called authoritarianism or imaginary Western democracy. In reality, the West is trying to maintain its hegemonic control over the world's resources to prevent China and also Russia and other countries in the global South from using resources to develop. So let's begin here. This first clip I'm going to go to shows how the EU leader considers China and Russia to be part of a unified bloc. She notes that China and Russia declared that their countries have a no limits partnership. And she refers to them combined as a global challenge. Here's this clip. But there is no room for complacency about this. Russia's failure alone won't save the rules-based global order because the Kremlin's revisionism is not the only nor the most serious threat to the rules-based order. The so-called no-limit partnership declared by Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping is also a clear challenge to the post-war order built on the core values of the UN Charter. And of course, we are observing carefully the aftermath of the 20th Congress of the Chinese Communist Party to see any changes to China's international posture. Independent of this, we need to counter this global challenge. We must rebuild trust in our global goals. Now, there are a few things she said there that I want to highlight. First of all, when she referred to the so-called rules-based order, she also called it the post-war order. So what she really means is the international framework set up after World War II in which the Western colonialist powers dominated the entire world. And she's complaining that the alliance between China and Russia threaten the post-World War II Western hegemonic order. That is to say, the control over the entire political and economic architecture that the West has enjoyed for decades through the Bretton Woods Conference, through institutions like, for instance, the UN Security Council, where there are five permanent members who are the victors in World War II, the US, Britain, France, and then, of course, Russia, former Soviet Union, and China. Now, why do Britain and France, very small countries in terms of population, have permanent members on the UN Security Council, but not countries in the global south with massive populations like India, like Brazil, like Indonesia. So what she's saying here is she's complaining that China and Russia and their allies largely in the global south are trying to change the so-called rules-based order in which the West makes the rules because, of course, that rules, so-called rules-based order benefits the West and keeps the West in a hegemonic position. Now, she also said something very, very important. She said that Europe is carefully observing the 20th National Party Congress of the Communist Party of China. And that is starting this October, and that's every five years, the Communist Party of China has this national meeting in which the leadership of the party decides what the new five-year plan will be, what the other goals of the government will be for the years to come. So she very ominously noted that Europe is watching that closely. And also in this speech, she made it clear that this proxy war that the West is waging against Russia is a war for the future of the entire world. So listen to this, this very important clip here. The war in Ukraine is not only a European war. It is a war for the future of the entire world. So Europe's horizon can only be the entire world. And I truly count on you to keep up the excellent work you're doing and to bring our voice and our values to all corners of the world. So there you have it. That is the EU leader acknowledging that the proxy war in Ukraine is not about Ukraine. It's not about democracy. It's not about any of that marketing propaganda rhetoric. It's about hegemony. She says Europe's horizon is the entire world. They are waging a proxy war for the future of the entire world. Western hegemony wants to main control over the entire world. And by the way, I should point out that Ursula von der Leyen is a right-wing German politician. And she concluded her speech 
with a touch of nationalist fervor that should be scary if you know Germany's recent his history, and declared, long live Europe. Here's that. Long live Europe. Now, I noted in my print report on this speech by Ursula von der Leyen that this speech that she gave in which she basically says that Europe is waging a new Cold War on China and Russia, it is very reminiscent of language that was included in the 2022 so-called strategic concept. That is the NATO plan that was published after the NATO summit this, to, this year, 2022. And that also basically declares a new Cold War on both Russia and China. I have a separate report about that. I will link to that in the description below as well. It, it's a very similar document. It, it refer, NATO referred to Russia as a threat. It referred to China as a systemic challenge. In her speech, Ursula von der Leyen referred to China and Russia as a global challenge and Russia as a threat. So almost identical language. And of course, the NATO document, the NATO strategic concept referred to China and Russia as so-called authoritarian actors and strategic competitors. So we're seeing that this is the rhetoric of the new Cold War. And if all we have to do is read these documents from Western governments, and we can very clearly see that they're waging a new Cold War. I've been writing about this for many years. I have a report back in 2018 about the, the U.S. national defense strategy, which is the first national defense strategy published by the U.S. Department of Defense in a decade. And that basically also declared a new Cold War. And it said that the new threat to U.S. national security, so-called threat, was not terrorism in scare quotes, but rather China and Russia. So we've seen, we've seen this rhetoric coming for several years now. But this, this speech from Ursula von der Leyen is very revealing in how hawkish it is and how she makes it very clear that it's not just Russia that is the target of Western imperialism. It's also China and specifically China's Belt and Road Initiative. This is a massive global infrastructure project involving more than half of the countries on Earth. And China is spending trillions of dollars building infrastructure to move the global core of the economy away from the West and back to Asia, where it was historically before the rise of European colonialism. In the 1700s, before the kind of peak of European colonialism, the majority of global GDP came from China and India, came from Eurasia, that massive landmass where the majority of the global population lives. Now, with the rise of European colonialism, these Western imperialist powers, these Western capitalist powers largely developed their economies based on stealing resources from the global south through the extraction of resources through colonialism. The Indian economists, uh, Utsa Putnaik and Prabhat Putnaik estimate that the British Empire siphoned out $45 trillion of wealth from the Indian subcontinent when it was colonized by Britain. And that's a conservative estimate. So that wealth was stolen by the global south. Of course, you also had slavery, which is another form of stealing the labor of people who were enslaved. And then, of course, you have the massive genocide and ethnic cleansing of indigenous peoples to steal their land. So capitalism, Western colonialism, was literally founded on theft, on massive theft like the world has never seen before. And that is how the Western capitalist powers became rich. Well, China, through its global infrastructure project, the Belt and Road Initiative, is trying to move the, the center of the global economy back to Asia, rebuilding the Silk Road. And anyway, the point is that European powers and the U.S. see the, the Belt and Road Initiative as a major threat to their hegemony. And in her speech, Ursula von der Leyen, she, said, she boasted that the European Union has created its own challenge to the Belt and Road Initiative and it's referred to as the global gateway. Here's a clip. It has been one year now since we launched our global gateway investment program. And since then, the demand for strong and value-based infrastructure investment program has only grown stronger. So global gateway is the opportunity to end unhealthy dependencies and to invest in partnerships of equals instead. That is our offer to the world. 300 billion of possible investment. Now, what is the point of this so-called global gateway? The European Union is trying to raise 300 billion euros 
from governments, EU member states, but also from corporations to do a series of so-called public-private partnerships, which means these neoliberal programs to enrich cor Western corporations and, and supposedly build infrastructure in the global south. And she said very clearly that the goal of the this infrastructure project, the global gateway, is to challenge China's Belt and Road Initiative. And she debunked this myth of so-called debt trap diplomacy and, and warned that China is supposedly trapping countries in debt, and that's why the West needs to save them. Here's that clip. A Belt and Road debt crisis is now in full swing. Tens of countries are massively indebted with China. Eight of these countries, from Angola to Laos, will spend in 2022 more than 2% of their gross national income to pay their debt to China. Our global gateway investment is about, about giving countries a better choice to give them an alternative. Now, I've done several reports showing how this myth of debt trap diplomacy is absurd. I recently did a video in a podcast and an article about how China forgave 23 loans for 17 African countries. And before that, China already canceled $3.4 billion in debt and restructured $15 billion of debt from 2000 to 2019. So this whole myth of debt trap diplomacy is absurd. And ironically, it's complete projection for exactly what the West does. So here's, here's context. Ursula von der Leyen pointed out that Angola and Laos have their 2% uh, of their gross national income goes to pay debt to China. Well, meanwhile, okay, 2%, that might sound like a lot. How much debt does Argentina owe to the US controlled International Monetary Fund, the IMF? Argentina owes $45 billion in debt to the IMF. That represents nearly 10% of Argentina's gross national income. 10% uh, last time I looked is uh, significantly larger than the 2% that Angola and Lao owe to China. And you think 10% is bad in Argentina. Look at Honduras. In 2009, the US government backed a right-wing coup, a coup d'etat that violently overthrew the democratically elected left-wing government in Honduras and installed a far-right authoritarian regime. And after that coup, the coup regime backed by the US, while also you know, trafficking drugs and murdering activists and overseeing the highest murder rate on earth and all this just horrible, uh, these horrible atrocities. Meanwhile, as poverty skyrocketed and now over half of Hondurans live in poverty, Honduras now has $9.25 billion in external debt. A lot of that is owed once again to the US controlled IMF. That means that Honduras' debt is ex just the external debt, this is not including internal debt, external dollar, US dollar denominated debt is 35% of Honduras' gross, gross national income. 35%, that's according to World Bank data. So von der Leyen is saying that China's evil because Angola and Lao have, they owe 2% of their gross national income in debt to China. Meanwhile, Honduras owes 35% of its gross national income in debt, largely to the IMF, which is controlled by the US. So, I mean, the hypocrisy is mind blowing. But speaking of hypocrisy, in this speech, von der Leyen also hilariously warned about Chinese influence in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, she of course didn't mention that China, unlike Europe, is actually located in the Asia Pacific region. Here's this very strange clip or take the Asian Pacific, where the footprint of Chinese investment is massive, of course. Europe appears to uh, forget that it's not in Asia, unlike China. And meanwhile, in her speech, von der Leyen called on all continents to rise up in defense of the rules-based order. That is to say, she's calling on the global south, all continents around the world, to join the Western new Cold War on China and Russia. Here, here's that clip. More than ever before, our fate, so Europe's fate, depends on our global outreach. The war in Ukraine will be decided first and foremost by Ukraine's brave fighters in Kherson, in Kharkiv, 
and all along the front line. We know that. But it will also be decided by our global response to Russia's aggression. So we need all continents to rise up in defense for the rules-based order. So it's very clear that Europe is waging a new Cold War, not only on Russia, but also on China. But in this speech, von der Leyen also made a lot of other interesting remarks about energy. And, and she, she boasted that the proxy war in Ukraine has made the U.S. and Europe become closer together than ever before. She said the transatlantic bond is stronger than ever. So here she boasts of how close the U.S. and Europe now are. Never before. Never before have I experienced such an intense cooperation with the White House as I did this year. I was in Washington in November as tensions started to rise at our eastern border, you recall Belarus. So we prepared the sanctions very early this year already with the White House. And when Ukraine invaded, was invaded by Russia, we were ready to act. We coordinated our sanctions round after round, and now the transatlantic bond is stronger than ever at a crucial time for Europe. Of course, the EU leader conveniently didn't mention that Europe is the junior partner and that U.S. imperialism is actually in charge, and in many ways Europe is becoming kind of colonized by the U.S. itself. But in, in her speech, von der Leyen made it very clear that this EU-US relationship is also one in which the US is exporting more and more energy, specifically LNG, which is liquefied natural gas, to Europe in order to end Europe's reliance on Russian energy. So here she talks about how the US, she, she boasts about how the US is making tons of money, and also Norway is making tons of money on exporting energy to the European Union. We stepped up our energy um, coordination and energy supplies on both sides. It helped enormously that I had the agreement with President Biden on the LNG, and they really stepped up in delivering LNG towards the European Union. And this made it possible for us to diversify away from Russian fossil fuels. And like-minded partners like the United States and, for example, Norway have massively stepped up and helped us break free from our very dangerous dependency. She referred to this as a huge tectonic shift in Europe. Now, this would also explain, as I have a separate video and podcast explaining, who probably sabotaged the Nord Stream pipelines between Russia and Germany. It's, it's no mystery. For people who wanna find out more about that, I have a whole separate episode where I went in great detail analyzing that. But in her speech, von der Leyen pointed out that at the beginning of 2022, Russia provided Europe with 41% of its imported pipeline gas. And as of this October, now Russia only provides 7% of the imported pipeline gas to Europe. And she boasted that this is very important and that, of course, the U.S. and Norway are making up for the decline in energy. But not only the U.S. and Norway... Also, she boasted that the European Union signed a trilateral gas deal with Egypt and apartheid Israel, uh, both of which are very much not democracies, by the way, both of which are authoritarian regimes. So once again, this idea that the new Cold War is supposedly between democracy and authoritarianism is ridiculous because the Western so-called democracies that are very undemocratic are more than willing to collaborate with the Egyptian military dictatorship and with the Israeli apartheid regime in which millions of Palestinians are, are treated like uh, animals and are occupied and have their rights systematically violated on a daily basis under a, an, ethno, an ethnocratic racist regime. So here she boasts that this energy deal with apartheid Israel and Egypt helps to weaken Russia's energy trade. Take our trilateral energy, for example, that we closed in June with Egypt and Israel. It has played an important role in our strategy to get rid of the Russian fossil fuels. 
But the EU leader also made it clear that this is not just about energy. It's also about control of natural resources, and especially in Africa, which is a very resource-rich region. And as Europe and the rest of the world tries to move toward renewable energy technology, she points out that Europe needs access to those natural resources in Africa. Here is a very revealing clip. But my visits in Cairo and Jerusalem were about much more than gas because our goal remains the transition away from fossil fuels and the Mediterranean countries hold an immense potential for renewable energy. For example, we have launched a new hydrogen partnership that looks very promising for both Europe and Egypt. And at the same time, we're working in the same direction with other Northern African countries too, because we know we need the energy, we need renewable energy, we need the hydrogen, and those Northern African countries have in abundance all the resources that are necessary. Now, von der Leyen said something there that was a little subtle, but it really shows the incredible hypocrisy when the West claims it's defending the so-called rules-based order. Here is the official transcript of this speech that von der Leyen gave on October 12th in Brussels at the official website of the European Union. Go to the official transcript. She notes her visits to Cairo and Jerusalem. Now, this is subtle, but this is essentially the EU claiming that Jerusalem is the supposed capital of apartheid Israel. According to international law, according to the United Nations, Tel Aviv is the capital of Israel. Jerusalem is occupied. East Jerusalem belongs to Palestine, and it is not the Israeli capital. Donald Trump made the U.S. government for the first time recognize Jerusalem as Israel's so-called capital, and we now see the European Union basically going along with this in violation of international law. So not only are they supporting this brutal, fascistic, racist apartheid regime, but they're also blatantly violating international law by claiming Jerusalem is Israel's capital. So first, I just wanted to point out that incredible hypocrisy. And then there's the incredible fact that she acknowledges how Europe needs to control the natural resources in the global south. And she wasn't done. Here she continues and explains that Europe needs the raw materials in the global south to build renewable energy technology like lithium and other minerals. And she, she warns that China has significant control and that Europe needs to prevent China from controlling these natural resources so the West can control the renewable energy technology. Here is once again a very revealing clip. But I just want to mention the third example that shows how important these moves are with our best friends. That is raw materials. Take lithium or take rare earth metals. They are vital for our green and digital transition. No wind turbine, no solar panel without these raw materials. The demand for them will exponentially increase, that's for sure. The not so good news is one country dominates the whole global market, and that's China. So while the European Union is pledging to spend 300 billion euros in the so-called global gateway in order to challenge China's Belt and Road Initiative, von der Leyen also said that Brussels is trying to expand the European Union and its influence in Central Asia in order to combat the influence of China and Russia. And it is in this spirit that we must also step up our engagement in Central Asia. The region is a gateway between Europe, Russia, and China. And it is going through an era of turbulent transformation. Some countries are pushing for reforms that seemed unthinkable just a few months ago. And they deserve all our political and economic support. So this is the time to enhance our economic engagement in Central Asia and provide uh, alternatives to the region and to be connected to the global economy. I want Europe to be a partner for change in Central Asia because 
the global geopolitics are also changing. You know that tectonic plates are shifting, and in times like these, we must be ready to sail uncharted waters. We must engage beyond our immediate neighborhood and the circle of our traditional allies. I think only if we do this can we contribute into shaping the future of fast-changing regions. Now, von der Leyen says something very interesting there that I do actually agree with. She said, global geopolitics are changing. Tectonic plates are shifting. I do agree with that. That's what I report on regularly here at Multipolarista. Geopolitics is changing very quickly, and we are seeing a decline in Western unipolar hegemony. And of course, everything that the U.S. and the European Union are doing right now is trying to return to that unipolar order to weaken the growing multipolar world in order to resubordinate the global south and essentially recolonize the rest of the world. And in the same vein, in her speech, von der Leyen called for the European Union to continue to expand into the Balkans as well. And she called for adding new member states, including Ukraine, Albania, North Macedonia, Moldova, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and even Georgia, which is, along with Ukraine, a neighbor of Russia that was previously part of the Soviet Union. And here is this very revealing clip. It's now a year ago that I visited the Western Balkans. And it was so obvious that our opponents look at the Western Balkans as a geopolitical chessboard. The Western Balkans belong in our family, and we have to make this very, very clear. So just as the U.S.-led NATO military cartel is continuing to surround Russia with hostile actors and U.S. military bases, potentially with nuclear weapons, threatening nuclear war, risking the annihilation of the planet. Meanwhile, the European Union is also continuing to try to expand right up on Russia's borders. Uh, it's, I mean, they couldn't be more blatant about how they just want to overthrow the Russian government and surround it with enemies everywhere, it, it turns. Now, also in her speech, because she, she spent so much time saying China bad, Russia bad, she also had to throw in Iran bad, right? The third country in this growing, very important Eurasian alliance. And she used her speech to condemn the Iranian government, and she claimed that the protests going on in Iran, where there are violence on, where there is violence on both sides, she conveniently failed to mention that there are violent rioters who are attacking police and security forces and, and attacking government buildings and and burning infrastructure. She forgot to mention that violent violence of the rioters, who are clearly backed by foreign powers. They have openly boasted of it in the U.S. media about these people like Masih Ali Nijad, who's funded by the U.S. State Department and worked with Mike Pompeo to try to destabilize Iran. So von der Leyen didn't mention any of that, of course. She, she only accused the Iranian government of violence. And then she said that in response to the protests in Iran, that the West is going to impose even more sanctions on Iran. So punish the entire Iranian population collectively it's collective punishment. It's illegal under international law. Damage the Iranian economy with illegal unilateral sanctions in order to try to bring about regime change. Now is the time to sanction these people who are responsible. The shocking violence inflicted on the Iranian people cannot stay unanswered. And we have to work on sanctions together. So those were the main parts of the speech by Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission that I wanted to address in this episode. Of course, she spent a lot of time talking about Ukraine. I've done enough episodes analyzing the proxy war in Ukraine. I don't really need to go too much into detail there. Really, the only two main points to take away from her comments on Ukraine is that one, the European Union is, is trying to make Ukraine a member as quickly as possible. She boasted that the EU enthusiastically gave Ukraine EU candidate status. She also boasted of imposing nine harsh sanctions packages on Russia in collaboration with the U.S. But the other, the second main takeaway from what she said about Ukraine is she boasted that the European Union has given at least 19 billion dollars, excuse me, 19 billion euros 
in economic support to Ukraine just since February. And that's not, she pointed out that that's a conservative estimate, the 19 billion euros. She points out that that, that does not include the military equipment and the weapons that was given, that have, have been given to the, uh, U Ukraine by the European Union. So we're talking about tens of billions of euros worth of military equipment in addition to the 19 billion euros of economic aid to Ukraine. And of course, that is also in addition to the at least $60 billion in support that the US government has given to Ukraine. I have a separate report about that. It's called US sends Ukraine $228 million per day in military aid to wage proxy war on Russia. That's just the military aid, $228 million per day. Of course, this comes at a time when Europe is suffering through an economic crisis and an energy crisis. So what we're seeing here is that the chief of the EU, Ursula von der Leyen, is boasting that Europe is willing to sacrifice itself economically in order to wage this new Cold War, not only in Russia, but also in China. This speech that she gave on October 12th makes it very clear that the new Cold War is a new Cold War being waged by the West on Asia, on China and Russia and their allies in order to maintain Western hegemony, in order to control natural resources and raw materials that are needed to build renewable technology, renewable energy technology. So just as they, they want to weaken Russia economically and prevent Russia from exporting oil and gas, they also want to prevent China from building renewable energy technology. They want the West to have a monopoly on renewable energy technology, which, by the way, is threatening the entire world because climate change doesn't just threaten the West. Climate change threatens every country on Earth because it's the planet that shares an environment. And as climate change makes natural disasters more and more frequent and causes droughts and other problems, the entire world is going to suffer. And yet we see that the leader of the European Union is saying that, that the West wants to maintain a control over the building of renewable energy, which means that it would make it more difficult for other countries in the global south to build renewable energy. So we see once again that this neo-colonialist mentality is still very much alive in Brussels. It's certainly alive in Washington as well. And that's what I report on regularly here at Multipolarista. I'm Ben Norton. If you like this kind of reporting that I do, you can support me at patreon.com slash multipolarista, or you can go to multipolarista.com slash support. And there are other ways to support the journalism that I do. I will be back very soon for more analysis of geopolitics and empire. Thanks a lot.